point your gun at me! Please! Don't point, he's pointing his gun at me! And this is supposed to be Canada. My father fought in the Second World War. I know he's rolling over in his grave. Like, he didn't go to protect our freedoms and our rights to have it trampled on in this manner. You know, when they say they're going to fight climate change, and then they arrest us and criminalize us for doing it. We're non-violent. And they come at us like we're the invaders. Five months ago, 30 people were arrested, opposed to a pipeline pushing its way to completion. By tactical officers with guns, they cut off the internet. Police are seen busting through the door of a tiny house, like a scene in The Shining, weapons drawn. Here's Johnny. Yeah, well, maybe here's Horgan. Don't touch her. But we're the original people of this land. And we get axes to come through our doors, power saws, snipers, attack dogs, militarized police. And then five to eight times a day, there they are, coming into our villages out there and just kicking open the gates and coming in and saying, oh, this is for public safety. It's a third militarized police action used to clear the way. Dozens and dozens have been arrested, some multiple times. APTN Investigates has been on this story for seven years. On this program, we will travel backwards through time. Our lens capturing a people determined not to quit and the reasons why. There is a humanity here. Like, we're nonviolent. And they come at us like we're the invaders, and yet they, they are willing to shoot us. How many times have we stared down the barrel of a gun? Have you ever had a sniper willing to shoot you? Don't point your gun at me! Please! Don't point, he's pointing his gun at me! February 7th, 2020. The man you hear is Denzel Sutherland Wilson at the Gidden Dam checkpoint located on Wet'suwet'en land. Take your gun off of me! Settlers call this kind of thing a blockade. But Suetin call it a defense against an invasion. The police see it as a criminal act and move in. You have a choice today. You can be complicit in the destruction of the future for your own children, or you can do what's right. 20 kilometers up the road, the police raid the Unistoten camp. In total, 28 people are arrested. We need some of the earth to be left alone. They don't have to take everything. And that's what we're doing. Our rights, our title, our jurisdiction, our authority, we constantly remind, whether it's provincial or federal governments, that they only have assumed and presumed authority. The authority lies with the what's open. Namaks and Madik, two high-ranking chiefs in the Wet'suwet'en hereditary system. Over the last five years, Coastal GasLink has been pushing to build a pipeline through the Wet'suwet'en territory in British Columbia. Today, the chiefs are back at the scene of what they call an invasion. It was so disheartening to see all this take place. But there's not a damn thing we can do about it, because that injunction that they had was, you know, it gives them the right to do that. But it, uh, what did, we didn't give them any authority to be on our territory. Police raid in 2020. Another raid the year before. Slato is the spokesperson at the Gidimden checkpoint. 
on January 7th, the first year of the raid that happened here at Gidim Den Checkpoint, um, the RCMP came. There was between 50 and 100 with lethal overwatch, um, attack, attack dogs, sniper rifles, uh, militarized RCMP. I remember at one point just feeling like I was going to throw up at the massive force. Um, there was a lot of emotions that were happening. Um, there was a lot of fear that was happening, but there was also this firm stance that I feel like everybody held. To watch that RCMP come toward us like a pile of ants, you know, that really, really took things out of me. Our people that was on this side of the fence, all they were armed with was a feather, an eagle feather. That's all they had. They had no weapons, nothing. And all the RCMP with 200 RCMP with guns. They're not going to see the end of resistance to this pipeline, ever. Um, we've always said, and the hereditary chiefs have said it in our feast hall, and that's our law. Cayendanega Mohawks block railroads in Ontario, sparking nationwide solidarity protests. Arrests are made at the Port of Vancouver and the Delta Port. The BC legislature is occupied by youth. After being arrested in 2019, Slato was pregnant during the second raid, showing support from down the road. The RCMP continue to be out here harassing us and surveilling us. They regularly drive up to my home where I have my children. Um, they regularly come by the camps, all the camps, and harass people and surveil people. The Wet'suwet'en were surveilled for years. This from a federal threat assessment in 2015. The faction is led by an Aboriginal extremist who rejects the authority of the Crown over his perception of what constitutes traditional territories. Eunice Stoughton's name also appears in Project Sitka, a 2014 RCMP intelligence report on suspected problematic Indigenous groups across the country. Indigenous people all over from coast to coast have seen what we're standing up for, and they're trying to fight for their same rights and responsibilities to their territories. That They've gained momentum, they've gained hope and inspiration from everything that happened in this past year. And so I think that we can see more of that. We've been supporting one another, we've been organizing together, and that's just going to grow and grow. After the raid in 2019, hereditary chiefs demand coastal gasoline stop work due to the destruction of cultural sites. The UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination calls for Canada to do the same. A $6.2 billion coastal gas link pipeline will transport natural gas along a 670 kilometer route from northeastern BC to Kitimat for distribution to Asian markets. CGL signed benefit agreements with 20 band councils along the route. In the 1997 Delgamu case, Peter Grant argues the courts legitimized the hereditary system. And so it was not brought by a band council or a chief and council, it was brought by the hereditary chiefs. Now that's very significant today because no court, not even the trial judge, rejected that the hereditary chiefs would represent their houses and their clans and, and the nation. Denny's eight you, Saka's eight you, Sky's eight. I am Chief Namox. I currently sit as the highest ranking chief of the Tai, the Beaver Clan of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. Chief Namox is our guide through Wet'suwet'en territory. The man knows his land, the names of every stream, every river, every mountain. Namox insists their ways were never lost. We were one of the last in Canada to have European contact. So even when they outlawed the potlatches, our feasting system, we simply did it on the territory. I'm very confident in mining. I know the history of it. We know where it comes from. We know where it started. We know who held it before. And it's never ever been lost and there was never that disconnect. The feast system is their law. It's how they govern. With rules and protocols intact, the Wet'suwet'en asserted they still controlled their territories. In January 2020, the hereditary chiefs flexed and tried to evict Coastal Gas Link. And it's clearly acknowledged that, yes, consent is required. So how does that fit with the economic force of a pipeline and those kinds of pressures on government? I, 
I wish that we could say, well, the battle is over. I think we've adv it's advanced on Indigenous rights and title, but the battle isn't over. Delgamut proved histories and laws were interrelated, but failed to grant title, which meant the eviction could be nothing more than symbolic. At the end of the day, the elders in the Supreme Court saw the Supreme Court decision as a big victory, and it was. What happened? Well, what happened is, is that the government created a treaty process that was in a narrow framework. They were not open to what, what does this mean? Let's have a conversation about how we are going to implement your title, and, and you have to prove each piece. The Wet'suwet'en raid exposes the cracks in the facade of reconciliation and talks of nation-to-nation -nation relationship. They continue to harass and invade us constantly, and they've never stopped. The Trudeau government has spent more on litigation against Indigenous nations than any other previous government. Others deal with the aftermath of standing up to a superior force two years in a row. Two of the people that we're here are new parents, and so we, um, they're taking time to, just like I had to take time to, to you know, to have a baby and to, to start a, a family, they started a new family, and um, the other people are still trying to recover from that experience. But why do we have to constantly put a monetary value on everything? Don't our hearts, our souls, our rights, our title, our freedom, isn't that more important than a dollar bill? And why should a corporation or elected government have the right to remove that from anybody? I believe that the world has already been damaged enough. A year later, construction is underway. The economy rolled on. And to the chiefs, the economy rolled over them. That is a so disheartening man. It actually makes me stronger. Yeah. They think we're just going to sit back on our heels and allow it to happen? No. They really don't know the what's open if that's what they think. With the very little we have left, our, our clan decided that no, we didn't want these pipelines because this is uh, only two areas that are not impacted and we still use these areas. This is deep in the bush north of Houston, British Columbia. And this is the way to the Unistoten camp. The birthplace of a movement. A movement that has become a major headache to big business and a possible stumbling block to the provincial government's economic plans. Unistoten territory begins across the Morris River. The only access to the backcountry is across this bridge. This place has been labeled a protest camp, a blockade, but Frida calls it home. She is the founder of the Unistoten camp. These structures do stand in the way of three planned pipelines, but she lives here all year long. It's a quiet morning. Peaceful. Another day of the simple life. And it's time to check the trap line. It's my clan's song, and that song says, uh, take me back, take me back, and my heart will be good. And I sing that because Mother Earth is telling us, take me back, take me back, and my heart will be good, because Mother Earth has been destroyed.
where the trap line set is uh, part of Bundesstaaten's territory and my ancestors have trapped this area for thousands of years. My grandfather, probably 26, 27 years ago, he used to trap this area quite frequently until he got elderly and then passed away. Well, the trap's right out, so we got something. Yep. This is line two though, eh? Yep. So do we just get here? It's a Martin. It's a pine Martin. That's predominantly what we trap in the winter. This was always used as the primary trapping because this is where all the fur bearing animals are and our other territory is mostly we call our hunting camp. This has always been the trapping one. They're trying to infringe on our right to do the very thing of trapping, hunting, berry picking, because their proposed route uh, is going to impact all of that for my people. So that's the reason why we're making a strong stance. Last summer, rumors circulated on social media that the RCMP were gearing up to move in on the camp. Supporters were quick to condemn this possible action. The RCMP released a statement denying those rumors. Our efforts all along have been in keeping the peace. In the end, nothing happened. It wasn't rumors because people within the community saw very heavy police presence. Okay. People don't just really walk in. It's not appropriate for him to stand in front of, of the police. My belief is that they were trying to get us to respond negatively, aggressively, so they could send their forces in. Frida believes the RCMP backed down when media put a spotlight on them. They had no choice but to leave because we had the camera. So her camera has been our weapon. We allow access us to access the territory here today. We would hope that the blockade across the Maurice River Bridge would be removed. That would be our preference. It's been approved and it's the route that's been agreed to with the 16 First Nations who we have our agreement with and, uh, and we believe it's the best route uh, for the Pacific Trail Pipeline Project. Our preference is to be able to engage through discussion and dialogue in hoping to resolve the matter. We brought you an offering. We have left some water, some tobacco. Company officials went to the camp to try and talk to Frida and her supporters. They didn't make it past the bridge. Their gift of tobacco and water rejected. The idea on the tobacco and the water was suggested by actually one of the hereditary chiefs who reinforced that we think you should do this. So <laughs> anyways, I, I always appreciated his, uh, his insights on that because that wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm asking you if you understand the protocols to enter Innistoten territory. This is, uh, Trans Canada threatened uh, to go to the police uh, after their company uh, workers were kicked off the territory by supporters. Today, uh, we will be filing an incident report uh, with the RCMP. Company officials now say they want to negotiate. Trans Canada did not provide anyone to appear on camera, but in an email, a spokesman wrote, We'd prefer to talk with them in a meaningful way. The police never did enter the camp, but that doesn't mean people still don't feel their presence. I want my grandkids to come up here, do what we're doing. We're not criminals. We're, we're peaceful people. We're with Tuatan. BC's premier promised an economic windfall due to LNG development. Now tough questions are being asked about the viability of those promises. Christy Clark fired back at LNG opponents, calling them the forces of no, afraid of change, afraid of the future. One of those naysayers is Green Party MLA Andrew Weaver. He says the world doesn't need our gas. There's already a glut. I would suggest that we are not going to see any major LNG development in BC anytime soon. I've been saying that since 2012. And, and I, I think we've been, you know, sold a bill of goods as British Columbians. Construction came to a halt just a few short kilometers from the Unistoten camp. And the plans to restart in the spring have been put on hold. 
it's time for probably industry to pause and to assess what is the appropriate pace of bringing these projects forward. We've thought of that, like what if the pipelines don't go through? What other opportunities do we have? So that's sort of what the economic development arm is doing, is pursuing other business ventures. One of the reasons some First Nations say they can accept LNG pipelines is because it's touted as a green energy source. It's uh, cleaner energy than coal. I think after seeing the pollution in China, I could see that it's a win-win. You know, we're helping out a country that's, we're going to help decrease their um, pollution. But Weaver is quick to criticize that notion. There's no question that natural gas is cleaner in terms of um, energy with respect to coal or oil. But it is not clean energy. Combustion of natural gas does produce uh, uh, carbon dioxide. It is a greenhouse gas. And nobody will take anybody seriously if they think that the shipping of natural gas from one jurisdiction to the other is somehow helping climate change. Everybody uses oil and gas every day. It's being responsible, uh, finding responsible methods in delivering it. I think that's the, uh, the strongest message that we can give is that it's about balance. Yeah, I had a house in Prince George at a business that I ran. I had savings in that business, I had personal savings as well. And I just abandoned all that to come and live out in the bush. I regret that it took me so long to get into this. I was always afraid of that because, you know, I got so accustomed to the colonial way of doing things that I couldn't envision a life outside of that until I actually came out and did it. With Chevron putting its project on pause, the only pressure the Unistoten may feel is getting their furs to market. Frida has big plans for this burgeoning community. Once she feels the threat of a pipeline through her territory is no more, the first thing she plans to do is open this healing center. We've been able to heal our people and starting with our youth because we always say our youth are our future, so we want to make sure our youth are healthy and strong, connected to their culture and the land, and then we're going to have our strong nation built up again. That's the future. Right now, it's time to go check the traps again. How are you feeling now that you've, you've just got a date set? Mm, hopeful. Just knowing and sort of reliving how much he suffered over the last 10 years. And uh, I know how hard it is having all the ducks in a row and having everything just set up so that uh, there's no looking back.